Hello, virtual doll convention. We are here with Robert Tonner in his studio. Hi, Robert. Hey. Hi, this is so exciting to be here. Thank you for bringing us into this part of your world. Oh, my pleasure. Wonderful. My so pleasure. what are we gonna do with our conventioners today? Well, let's, I'm gonna show you how I go about making a pattern. Now it's gonna be, it's gonna be very quick. I don't know how much time we have. I, I don't wanna bore you, but I'm just gonna show you the process. Now, I may not finish anything, but I'll, sh I'll show you kind of how I think yes. about it and how I go about it. Oh, we'd love to learn. Okay. We'd love to learn. So okay. So this is from, from inception of when you say, I'm going to start something. To, to Now, let me give you the lay down of what we have this uh, cutting table. Um, and this, was, this is a professional cutting table, believe it or not. I mean, the tabletop has to be replaced. But other than that, it's the, it's the pro thing. I have this half iron here um, that's... Plugged in, yes, it's plugged in, ready to go. Always start with that. There's a pair of pants I need to make a hem on, but that won't be today. And uh, we have muslin. Uh, I have paper and pen here to uh, make notes and or to design. Uh, I have a doll body that we're going to use. This is the yellow one body. Some of you may know it. Of scissors, pen, and very important tape, and you'll see why. Cool. Um, also, over here, we have a professional sewing machine. Uh, I love a home sewing machine that does everything, but this thing is a workhorse. Let's get and in there and see. Oh, it's a singer. It's a singer. And so... And it's probably 50 years old. And it's model 591, everybody, if you'd yeah. like to try and find them. Of course, they, they probably don't make it anymore, do they? You know what? Maybe I don't do. know. Okay. It's such a workhorse that I have that hasn't you come only up. Need one. But I don't want it to come up, right? <laughs> and then we have a marrow machine, which um, marrow. I think it's called a marrow machine in in the oh. industry. Uh, home people, you know, home sewers probably know it as a serger. Oh, okay. Okay. I've heard so, that before. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's you know it's crucial to have this to help finish seams and stuff like that. Wonderful. So that's what I start with. And my trusty pair of shears. All right. Anyway. So I think I think what we'll do. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do this. So it's an Elwin body. So I always you know to draw something. Let's let's give her the basic shape. So that's Elwin's torso. And then let's do. We'll do a full skirt. So this is a very basic sort of thing. And then we're kind of neckline. Let's just do a jewel neckline. Perfect. And maybe, and she'll need darts. And I don't know if we'll get to this, but I'll show you how I go about a sleeve, you know, fitting a sleeve. So we'll do a long sleeve. All right. This dress won't win any awards, but it'll show you the basics of. I already love it though. <laughs> of, of what we can do here. All right, so I start with muslin. You get muslin at uh, Joann's. You get it at any you know, sewing store. And this is how you start. Muslin is cheap. Um, it's cotton. And you can really watch grain lines, which you want to do. And grain lines are the, the way the, the, the grain of the fabric, the cross, the cross and the, the length of the fabric. Um, you got to make sure that those are straight and in the proper place so that things fit right. So first thing I do... I know what my design is. I'm going to do a little top first. I'll start with the top. So I need to cut off a little bit of fabric. It's nice that it just kind of rips like that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's muslin. It's great that way. And I usually, what you want to do is a nice square so that the grain lines are, are right. They've got to be, you know, uh, nice and square. So you just kind of, you can stretch muslin to make sure that it, it, it sits right. So, then I come over to the trusty ironing board. If the iron's hot, it is. And we just press it out. So you start with, you start with really a nice, neat, clean mm -hmm. sort of canvas. Now, Elowen has, she has this upper torso joint. So I want to stabilize that a little bit. Because if, if I if I drape on this, you're gonna have it's gonna be too long in the side, you know. So when she's standing, you want it like this. So you want to stabilize that by just taping it. You could glue it. It's amazing it too, what a little tape will do. Yeah, exactly. 
So this will keep it pretty sturdy. Her arms are out. Now you see here I've, drew, I've drawn, this is you know, where I want the, the, from experience I know that this is approximately where a jewel neckline should fit, uh, where a high waist should fit and where a regular waist should fit. And then um, side seam lines and then the armhole. Mm -hmm. So that's already drawn on this body. So I don't use this body for anything else but a model. Okay, you start with, oh. You gotta have a ruler, straight edge. And it's here. Always making sure that the fabric is, you draw your center line. Now this, this should be, it should be right on top of a, uh, a grain line. Uh, and it's got it from the selvage to the grain line. I usually do a half an inch. <coughs> and this will be your center front line. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape this to the body. But the, what I want to do is I know that this is where my neck's going to be. So you want to, you want to clip that at the top. You want to clip that down three quarters of an inch, an inch, doesn't matter. Chop that off a little bit. Come here, lay this, the center front on the center front of the doll the doll body, and that at the neck, the clip at the neck. Don't pull, you know, okay. don't, you don't want to do this or that or whatever. You want to lay it down there so it stays kind of nicely. And that's where the tape comes in. Use a lot of tape in this process. Now, if it was a, if it was a dress form, like the dress forms behind me, you'd use pins to do this. But uh, this is in lieu of pins, the tape's in lieu of pins, so that's why you're using tape. Right? And right away I can see I have to go up a little bit. Just make sure that that clip is where it needs to be and that this is in the center. That looks pretty good. Okay, the next step, I have a little, uh, one of these little, um, these are great for dolls, these little tiny detail scissors. And they have the sharp point at the end, which Very you definitely point. need. Yeah. And you go in here. Again, don't pull. You just want to lay it where it sits, and you want to clip into the neck. Because if you have a wrinkle, if you have a wrinkle on the fabric, that means that you're not that you've either pulled it or you need to clip it. Okay. All right. So that's nice and smooth. See how that's nice and smooth? Mm-hmm. You come to the back, you tape it again. This is just to kind of hold it down so you can move on. Whoops. Try not to let go of that. But just like that and like that. All right. So you've got that, that nice, beautiful, smooth shoulder. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a set in sleeve. So I'm come up here and kind of clip in to get. You can feel where the shoulder joint is, and that's basically where our, our, our uh, seam for the for the sleeve is going to be. And you you kind of clip in there, not going into the body. You, okay. you want to make sure you don't go into the body. And then at a certain point, you'll be able to turn, and not yet. You'll be able to pull the top to the side. Now, and when I say pull, I mean, you know, a mm -hmm. smooth mm -hmm. the top to the thing. And then you kind of see where your side seam will be. So all this can go. So you just cut that off. Now, again, lightly 
these are these are like light as a feather. You have to go very gently. Do not fight the fabric. If you fight the fabric, you're gonna lose. I like that. Remember yeah. that, everybody. You're gonna lose. So you should get a nice smooth, and then tape it. All right. So you've kind of got you're you're starting to get that now. What you, um, there's a couple things. What are you going to do here? Well, that's going to be your dart. Mm. We have the dart in the picture. That's going to be your dart. And what are you going to do here? There's a, there's a wrinkle here that's pulling. So to get rid of that pull, it's a slash. You slash it up. I see. See, that, that kind of gets rid of the pull. Right now, you take your trusty pins. How cool is this, everybody? Uh, don't you just feel so lucky to be here right now? Well, let's see how it, it turns out. <laughs> and we'll, we'll see if they're... All right. So um, next, we'll do the dart with pins. You know, again, now, the point of a dart, people are often confused about that. It should, the, the point should be at the fullest point of whatever you're trying to dart into. So on the bust, it's the fullest point of the bust. So, and again, one, it, it, darts are different because darts can also be style lines, mm -hmm. but you basically, you know, to do a basic dart, you want to keep, you want to keep a straight grain in front and then just pull it over. Like so. Oops, I can clip here. Get rid of some of this. See how nice and smooth that is? And then you can just pull it. Oh, that looks great already. Amazing. So therapeutic for us to watch. It's like a cooking show, but for dolls. Yeah. I'm just going to see you yeah. cooking in your kitchen. <laughs> you have to be careful here. Now you can you can pin up to there, which I usually do. And now there's a curve in this in the waist, so it's not a straight line. But so again, you have pulls, so you you're gonna want to look at that. The waist is up a bit, so you can keep you can clip. If there's a pull, you, you're probably going to have to clip a little bit. And I can pull this. A bit more. Oops. Now, from experience, I, you know, I know that when, when I sew this, the, 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 the slight wrinkling and all that, that'll go away. Now, when it looks like it's fit, so you see you already have the shape of the, mm -hmm. you know, nice smooth sh shoulders, nice smooth side seam, and you, you know where your waist is. Here's the fullness of the waist right there. You know where that is. So you mark it now. So you want to go shoulder seam, straight line at the top of the shoulder, and then you want to, do, are you getting that? Mm -hmm. get oh, that? yeah, we're, we can see. Okay. So you have a nice neckline. And then around. Now I come down usually, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch. If you go too high up, it's not going to fit. You won't be able to lift the arm and all this. So you want to give it some room. And then down the side. Now, a lot of this is from experience, but, you know, you try to keep it in the middle. It looks like I'm going in a slant, but you, you're trying to keep it in the middle. She, her torso is, is kind of, she has a sway back, a little bit of a sway back. So you want to make sure that the seam is in the center of that. And then you come to the waist.
There you go. I love where the waistline is, but do you? I really love a high waist too. Do you love high waist as well? I do. Yeah. So that's easy. You just you know any place just you want. Pull it up. Okay. Yeah, you could just mark it up and. You know. I think a high waist is, is um, very flattering, on a lot of uh, figures. And Ellen doesn't have much of a figure, so I don't I don't know if it even matters. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. And if you wanted to, you know, drop waist, it's, you know, mm -hmm. at the waist, you would come out because she gets wider here. So, th so that, that angle is going to have to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And on, on the reverse, when we do the back, it will have to come out this way. So if you see that. It's it, goodbye. It, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so there you have, now I would go on to. And you repeat the process for the back. Were you able to catch the Christian Dior exhibit where they had that whole room full of all the muslin? I did see pictures of Wasn't that. Wasn't that neat? It was amazing, yeah, really. They used to make full things in, you know, in miniature. Yeah. yeah. Now I can tell that the grain line is off here, so it's shooting over to the left a little bit. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull it straight in that grain line. So you can just pull it. You don't have to cut a new piece or anything. Yeah, you pull it and then just steam it a little bit and it'll stay. That's what's so wonderful about muslin. So now I have a straighter line, and then you follow the straight grain line. Now this will be your center back. I'm going to make sure that that's a straight line, too. And you kind of do the same thing, only in reverse here. Uh, the back neck, this will be the center back. Wait, am I doing this? I'm doing it wrong. There we go. This will be the center back, sorry. And I know it's going to have a curved neck, so I, I usually clip in here. And we have our marking of the neckline, so I'll come up. Again, this center line. Now you're gonna, it'll close in the back, so you'll add the, um, the overlap for the back after. But you just wanna get the shape now. You can do that on your pattern. So again, you tape it, and you come down to the center of the back, and you tape. Now, I've worked with really talented pattern makers over the years, and we've never been able to come up, come up with a better thing than the tape. The tape. Method. Tape it is. Tape it is. Um, I come to the shoulder then, bend this, fold this over. Oops. And again, we're just, you know, so we clipped into the neck, and now we're... we're Doing the shoulder line. I just put the pin in my mouth. Don't ever do that. Sometimes that comes in handy to straighten it out when your hands are full. Yes. All right, see that mm -hmm. nice straight. Oh, that already looks so good. And then again, you, you want to. We're working on the armhole, so you want to clip in toward the armhole, but not going into the body yet. Okay. And you want to get to that point where you can turn this under, not quite there. Just be careful because you can you can cut too deep. And there you go. And again, you can see right away that this is going to be way too much, so you can just get rid of that. And that. So, and I'll probably do the hip too because it's a little bit more advanced pattern making when you do the you go down over the hip. Now, there's not as there's no bust in the back, of course. So, you you can on some dolls you don't need a back dart. In fact, I'm going to try to I'm going to force this a little bit so it doesn't need a back dart. If you have a, a waist seam, sometimes you don't need a back dart. So I'm 
clipping up to the about the waist. And let's trim some of this off. Isn't this so cool just to see how he just does this so quickly too? I love it. And this is this is how everything starts. Yes. Okay, now I'm trying to get this smooth line and it's working really well. But so you know the the armhole is interfering. So again, you can kind of you get to know this after you've done this a few times. But you, uh, it's the the clipping will release that. And again, use light fingers. You should mm -hmm. nothing should be tight. It should all be gentle. Angel fingers. And I fold this over. Whoops. Fold this over to make, to match up with the line you did on the front. And pin it. And pin. Yeah, so we were able to do that. So you have a nice smooth back but we didn't have to put a dart in, so that's good. All right, so now what you wanna do is you wanna mark it. Um, a good way to mark this fold is to just use the side of your pencil. Oh. And that'll, yeah. that'll mark that. You can match the side here, and you come around to the back. I'm trying to keep it, you know, a lot of it's eye. You can, uh, you can adjust that when you take it flat. Let me take it off the figure. And then you go to the neck, get that mark. Oops. Yeah, I'm making a mess here. There we go. You get it to fold so you can just slide a pencil and then down to the armhole. Gotta make sure all those match. Mark it. Mark it around the armhole. And you've dropped it about a quarter from, from the joint. So you just blend that in. Okay, so a couple of things here. The skirt's gonna be easy because it's just gonna be a straight piece that you can, uh, you can just gather into it. So, you know, you could almost stop now because you have a bodice and you put on pieces and you've got a dress. You know, just if it's pretty fabric, you might be done. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to take this apart so you can see what the flat pattern looks like. This should be a very clean, decent looking flat pattern. So let's see what it looks like. How cool. It's so amazing now, Rachel, to see ever, the process. Have you ever done no, that? I have not. I have not. And a lot well, of our viewers have not. What do they teach not. you young people in school these days? They should be teaching this. <laughs> yeah, I, would think, I think so. <laughs> So see, you have, uh, if, you can see the, if you can see the markings, you have a very clean, oh, yeah. nice pattern. Now, uh, here's where, I use a French curve and this sort of thing to kind of shore up the line. But basically what you need to do, now in real pattern making, when something's really small, you may, it, like darts, um, the, the goal of a pattern maker when they're making clothes for production is to get rid of all curves. So if, if a sewer who's making the outfit can sew a straight line, that's faster and better. So you, but with dolls, if you, want to, uh, you, if you want to really watch the fit, you can kind of keep the curves in, but it's harder for you to sew, you know, even if you're making one. So mm -hmm. I usually try to straighten everything out. Like, and here, here's, here's an example. So this is a nice straight line, but this is slightly curved. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten that out. We know this point is correct, and we know this point is correct, so I would just straighten that out. It's a little tighter, a little looser. It, it'll work itself out when you, when you get it into fabric. This is almost perfectly straight, so that's good. There is a uh, slight curve. These things are great. The French curve, if you 
Heather. There's a slight curve up in the waist. So I do that. Slight curve, that's not a straight line. The waist. And then this should definitely be a straight line, the side seam. So where your marking is, you just you're what you're doing is you're just cleaning that up. And then the same here. And around the neck. Yeah, well, what am I doing? I should be using this, but I love that. What a handy tool. Yeah, these they make a nice clean curve, and that's what you want. Let's see here. That's good. And what, you, what, what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to find, I'm trying to match the curve on here so that you get a, a, a really, you know, precise mm -hmm. sort of line. So there's a, if you see, there's a slight curve going into this deeper curve. So I'm trying to find the, that curve on this. So let's see what we got here. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, it's a little straight. But that'll work. How cool! So there you, you guys. have a really yes. precise, it's, it's basic, nice little... but it's so classic. And that was and that'll fit. And you can do a lot yeah. with this. This is what they call a sloper. It's like a basic pattern piece, and okay. you can do a lot with that. Now, to get the back, first thing I'm doing is I'm checking the shoulder to make sure that that and that's almost dead on. So you fold it where where you had it, and just make sure that. You know, everything lines up, and it does. So then I can go here. I can true up this uh, shoulder seam. Get the back of the neck drawn. Now, I, to me, this is a little straight and then curved. So I'm gonna do a little bit of adjusting. And that, that again, is like from looking at patterns and knowing your, your patterns. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just a little bit off. So I would just kind of fill it in a little bit there and get a nice curve in there. And then come out again Oops. here. And then, to me, this is, the back probably should go up a little bit, but I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that or it's going to show. So, find that again. Okay. So, there you have two very nice clean pattern pieces. Cool. Now, the grain line that you marked, this is the grain line. If you guys have seen this on patterns, that's the grain line. That's the center back grain line. So it's a center back. You want to mark everything so you don't forget. Back, this is the back, this is the front. Okay, center back. So now to add the overlap, I would probably, I would come out here a half an inch. A quarter, of, on doll clothes, I always use a quarter of an inch. On people clothes, on patterns, they use five-eighths of an inch, but on dog clothes, you only need a quarter. So uh, I'd come out here a half an inch, and we don't really have that much on here, but when if I went to transfer this to a piece of paper, which I would, or um, you know, scan it and put it online and, and fix it up to send to the factory, mm -hmm. I, would, I would make sure that this is all correct. Now, did you go through this whole process with the gray stall? Yes. Wow. Yes. There's so many layers into making a doll. Yes. Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm just adding, uh, I'm, I, I, well, I, I didn't do that one. I'm adding the seam allowance. So, and you gotta have one of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, you can just you know, go around and add your seam allowance. So see, you're getting a real, 
Uh, round neck, sometimes I'll use an eighth of an inch. Let's do an eighth of an inch on this. I do that just because um, it's, you know, if it gets to be a quarter, mm -hmm. you kind of lose the, the, the neckline. And so there you go. Now you can trim. No, no. Sorry, rushing a little bit. Around the sleeve. And then you, you can trim this off so you can see where your pattern is. Oops. Trim, trim, trim at your quarter of an inch line. Okay, there's the back, and let's do the same thing in the front. Now, because this is center front, and if you want it to open in the back, this would be the fold line. So you put that on a folded piece of fabric so that when you open it up, you have mm -hmm. the full front. Oh, cool. And then the dart. There's a slight curve there, so make sure you get that in. Quarter of an inch all the way around. This is such an art form, Robert. Well. It's just amazing. <laughs> you know what, I, I, and I love pattern making because it's, you know, there's something so creative about it and it's, it kind of forces me to slow down and to feel what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's that whole smoothing and, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, I can't, that gentle touch, that I can't tell you how important that is. You can't rush a pattern. No. It, it, Even though you're doing it very quickly, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'd go into production on this pattern, but it's definitely the way I do it. Okay, so then we go here. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this together real quick and then we'll check it on the, on the, and make any adjustments on, on the pattern. We'll check it on the doll and then check and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. Okay, so now you have your two pattern pieces front and back. So cool. Front and back. Uh, at this point I usually press them. And let's sew it together. This won't take long. I have black thread going in the machine. Use black thread. So we can see. So you can see. Yeah. Oh, little pointy scissors. Thank you. I never have an assistant. So <laughs> we are so happy to be your assistants today. Yeah. Aren't we guys? This is so cool. I love this machine. It doesn't look like, my, well, to me she looks great, but she, you know, uh, she sews so well on anything. Pins. At the sewing machine, you should always have pins and uh, a little a clipping scissor and all this kind of stuff. I start with the dart. And I'm going to, I'm, we're going to do it so that when it's finished, it'll fit. Well, you can see the lines mm -hmm. on the final thing. So I'm going to do it like that. So I mark the, I met, mark the point of the dot with a pin and then a quarter of an inch. So it's a quarter of an inch from the waistline up to the apex of the dart. So let's do that. Turn this thing on. It's loud. And you follow the cord of here.
Now, the couture way of doing this is not to uh, backstitch. I always backstitch, but uh, the couture way would be just to run, run the stitch off the end and then hand tie it so you don't get any, it makes it thicker when mm. you do it like this, but you know, for demonstration purposes. Then it's okay. Yes. So uh, next we'll go on to the shoulder seam. threads as you go and the side And if you did it wrong and you've already sewed it together, do you just pull out the thread or do you? Yeah, you could just take this out. Oh, Actually, that's good. I'm gonna do that. Good sure. to know. Okay, right here. okay so I think I've, I've, I've come a little wide here and it's not as straight as I would like, so I'm gonna right. take it out. All right. So seam ripper. Let's see if we can, I'm gonna come around this way. The light's, the light's a little funky, funky. for us. Um, Get some more light on here. Well, actually it's a little too much light. Do you see the glare? Oh, no, no, no. When I come in, okay. No, now try good? Yep, okay. now we're good. So, the seam ripper, and I just, you got to have one of these things. If you're sewing without a seam ripper, you're not really sewing. So this happens a lot, everybody. Don't feel bad. Oh, yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. It's part of the deal. And I've been sewing, I hate to say this, but it probably is like close to 60 years. I love that. And I still have to use the seam ripper, so. That it makes us feel so much better when we know. <laughs> when we All know, right. because. It happens to everybody. Yes. All right, again, so I'm going to try this again. And, I mean, this is, not, this is straight sewing. This is not a big deal, but it's like the, Hey, there, you have a beautiful straight, straight seam. Ready? And clip all your threads. So then right. you let's, go to your friend. Yes, let me show you the, the here, oh, sorry. Oh no, now we can see it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Now let's go to your friend, the ironing board. You gotta have one of these. If you're sewing for dolls, it's a it's a little mini doll sort of thing. I think you can get them, and Barbara, excuse me if I get this wrong, but I think you can get them at Dolls Park. That's correct. Yep, okay. you can get them at Dolls Park. That's where we I don't got know, ours. We make them, I make some, or and you know, even for a muzzle, you're not gonna you're not gonna. This isn't gonna be shown to anybody. Nobody's gonna see it. But this is the only way you can really judge if it fits. You make sure that the the, the muslin is as precise as you can make it. Now, usually on the dart, oh, excuse me, out of frame for a second. What you do is, uh, this is open because that's the way we did the pattern, but uh, I usually open it up to the apex so that you get a nice, so that you can really open up that dart. Ugh. And come back here. Again, the fullness of this point here, and you just press it open. And that's very nice. So you, get, you have a nice fit. All right. That looks awesome. Now, if you're making this, what I always do, I didn't do it on this because I'm rushing a little bit, but I always 
do a stay stitch on the neckline. And what a stay stitch is, is just a, it's a stitch to hold the fabric so it doesn't stretch. And it's especially important around the neck, especially if you're doing a full muslin, or both sides of the muslin. But uh, you want to clip into that curve because whereas that, that was made to fit, this line will not fit. Okay. It'll pull. So you want to clip into the curve. And if you have a stay stitch, that's fine. You clip into the curve, clip into the curve, clip into the curve. And, you know, any curves, curves usually need to be clipped. And again, you know, if you were doing a sleeveless dress, I, I would stay stitch the arm. I know where I, I, personally, I know where I stretch things and stuff like that, so I'll know when I have to do that stay stitch. Okay, so this is always a fun part. Let's see if it fits. And it should fit, right? We hope so. Yeah. I think I think it will. What do you guys think? The moment of truth. Yeah, real. <laughs> oh, look at that. I'd say that's a pretty perfect fit. That is a perfect fit. How gorgeous. That is amazing. Oh, it makes me appreciate clothing so much more. Just no, even seeing this no, part. No, I know you appreciate clothing. Well, I, I do. I see what you wear. I know you appreciate clothing. <laughs> I, I do, but to know that this is where it what starts. What has to go into yes, it, right? yeah. It's amazing. So I'm just, I'm just doing this so we can just see how it, how it fits if it was... Now, uh, adjustments I would make, looking at this, I see this, that there's a point here. So this is the time when I would come back in and I would kind of bring that down so that you have a nice even line. So this, this one part here needs to be brought down. And I'd probably use another pencil. I'd use a colored pencil or something like that so you can tell which one. And it looks like I'm a little short here on the back. Like it's, it's a little bit narrow from here to here. So what I'd probably do is just add a 16th of an inch. So I'd make my center line here and then add a half an inch from there. Okay. All right. So then you get a full bodice. What do you guys think? That, how neat was that? So you could have a dress if you just added a full a skirt. skirt, like a gathered skirt. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Did you like teaching us that? Yeah, that's we loved fun. It. I have all this knowledge that nobody ever wants to know. So oh, we nice do. You, <laughs> we do. <laughs> when, what a treat. Yeah, when people want to just know. Just to see you in action, too. It's just, you make it look so easy. And um, with practice, it people can get there. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it is fairly simple as long as you, you know, follow the rules and, you know, and understand why you're doing them. Uh, there's there's a, an old book that I think is pretty good. Oh, yes, we'd love to know what your favorite resources are. It's this McCall sewing book oh, from great. Random House. You probably get it on eBay or something like that, but it was done in, you know, it's, it's very dated, but the, but the process is all the same. Mm -hmm. It's 1963, and it was republished in 1968. Oh, perfect. So if you can find this, this, this is a kind of a great, and I'm sure there's, there's newer sewing books out there. But that one's tried and true, one of your favorites. Yeah, that one, that one works. I love it. So then when, when you get to that part, then, and then what do you do? When I get here? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends on what I'm making. Now, if I was to do the sleeve, I don't know if we have time to do the sleeve. Oh, we have time. Okay, we have time to do it. So let's do the sleeve. <laughs> okay. The next thing is the sleeve. Because so we love it. I'm happy with this. It, actually, let me tell you what I'm not happy with. Yes. Because, I, you know, I think... No, that's pretty good. I, I I actually think that I would bring this side seam. It looks like it's shooting to the front a little mm -hmm. bit. So I think I would bring it back a little bit on this pattern, on the front pattern, and then take it off the back. That's probably what this whole thing was. Okay. But I, I would, that's just an adjustment. It fits, and it you know it's a nice straight line, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's mm -hmm. looking at that. That's what I would do. And what else would I do here? Yeah, I don't like the way that I don't the darts neither in the side nor straight up and down. And so I would change that. Uh, so that wasn't purposeful. You you want it to be straight well, up and down. Well, it is the straight it is the straight grain which was pur 
purposeful, but what it does is it makes a wider, it makes it look wider here. Mm -hmm. So you could bring this in a little bit, which would just make it look nicer if I brought it in like, you know, uh, three sixteenths down here to nothing. But that's an adjustment you can make, or you don't have to make it. It depends on, you know, if you're okay, you know, I'd be okay if it came out like this and, you know. So let's do the sleeve. Now sleeves, this is my own like little tricky way of doing sleeves because I couldn't figure out how to do it on a doll. We get to learn Robert's tricks. Yeah. I again, love it. What do we do first? We make sure that the grains are right. You can kind of pull them out and then yeah. just smooth it out. Turn that yeah. off for now, just to. Okay. Yes, yeah, an, an annoying. It loves to talk. It does. All right, so I, I take a piece that I know is going to fit around her arm because we're doing a straight sleeve. Mm -hmm. So that fits. So what I will do is I'm going to draw a, the center. Now, you know, Elowen can straighten out her arm like this, but most people's arms has have a slight bend mm -hmm. in them. So I usually do it, I drape that way. Kind of doesn't matter on a doll. Um, but we want to draw the center line down here. So we want to draw that on the fabric. Center line. This is easy, you draw a T. Now, what the, the cross line, the T line, this will be the underarm. Okay. And this is, the, this is the length. So this is the cap from the underarm to the top of the shoulder. So, uh, and this is where I take my trusty tape measure. This is messy work. I use yeah. my fabric tape measure for everything. Yeah, you got it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hang pictures with my fabric. <laughs> so what? What? I'm, so I, I want a very slight cap. I don't want to, you know, I don't want a puff sleeve. So I want a very slight cap. So what I want to do is I want to measure from that shoulder seam to the underarm. You know, and the tape give or take, you kind of want to add, you know, if, you, if you're doing a puff sleeve, you would do it like this, because you want that puff to happen before you get to the bottom of the sleeve. So, but I, we don't want that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that we're at a, eh, we're about an inch and a quarter okay. to the underneath. So you make that measurement on here, inch and a quarter. Okay, so you have that. Then you, the length of the sleeve, easy. You go from here, using the same curve over the shoulder, and you go, and it's about five inches, give or take, five and an eighth. <coughs> Excuse me. So you come down five and an eighth. <laughs> it's like it's, it's familiar language. for us. Yes, let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, five, and an eighth here. And you draw that one. Okay. Now it's it, it's kind of what you think. This is why it's you know it's, it's this is a very basic sleeve, but this is why it's it's not that the basic concept is not that difficult, and you can you can do a lot from this basic sleeve. So I want, I'm gonna make it, we want it to be an inch, two and a quarter of an inches. Yeah, let's do two and a quarter inches. That's an inch and an eighth on each side. 
One of my biggest pet peeves is not having enough room to move in long sleeve outfits. So it's important to is take that lift? into consideration. It's usually, usually, yeah. Or is it, is it bend? Bend. Bend is a whole different. It's a whole well, different thing. Yeah. Lift is enough room. It's got to, this has to be low enough or it has to be a gusset so that you can lift. Uh, There's so much here, to take into consideration. Yeah, you have on to, a long sleeve. You have to build a long sleeve for that bend. And there should be a dart here if you're using a tight sleeve and all that, depending mm. on the fabric, of course. People, people don't really do that. That's kind of an old fashioned way of doing it. Here you another. We've done a lot of advanced things, but it is so important for us to learn these basics because a lot of us are just starting out in our journeys okay so it's two and a quarter in inches around the thing so the next line that would draw you want it's two and a quarter half of that would be an inch and an eighth so on either side of that line you want to do the inch and an eighth so here's an inch and an eighth inch and an eighth and inch and an eighth and on the other side Eighth. Oops. Eighth. And then, all right. So, uh, did something wrong here? Okay. okay, so next you draw that line. So you, you're blocking out your basic sleeve, your, your sleeve sloper, as they call it. All right. Uh, Okay, so you have to get from here to here. And you need a little bit of lift so you can lift it. So sleeve patterns, if, you, if you've ever done any sewing, sleeve patterns, the top of sleeves look like this. And they usually come in like this. Right? All you sewers out there? Right. So uh, this is for the lift, this triangle, this bump out okay. so that you can lift it. Um, this is the cap of the sleeve, so you usually have to ease that in. So I would give it, for, for a doll this size, and this is a guess, and what, the, the, the way I would do this is I would do the sleeve and then decide it needs more lift or it doesn't. So I would come out, I think, 3 16 You mark that from that inch and an eighth. And 3 16 And you draw the triangle to... You don't put the lift in there. You draw the triangle to there, all right? Now, what you want to do is... This is freehand, and this is practice and all this. Um, but you want to kind of... You want to draw that cap. I'm sure there's a more professional way of doing this, but that's how I do it. So you kind of have your cap, and then you'd come in like this, and you'd kind of just bring that down. And it's you can use your your good old French curve here. French curve. Everyone needs to go out and get one of those. Yeah, to make very handy. To do the. And then you have this. And again, you should be using a French curve. Uh, and then this. To take it, you don't want points here. You, the gradual curves, nice and gentle. So you see we're starting to have that. Now what I would do from here is fold it. For people, front and back are different on the sleeve. For dolls, they don't really, my experience is they don't really need to be. Makes it a little bit easier. Yes, it does. So the front and back can be the same. Now, if you, if you're, if you want to know that the, uh, when a person stands the shoulder, there's more curve to the shoulder here and it's flatter on the back. So um, a, a sleeve, a sleeve on a person usually has more to the front and it's a little sm smoother curve in the back, so that's what that is. So you can do that on a doll, but it's up to you. 
All right, so now what I would do is, so I have half the, the sleeve pattern, so now I would come and start adding the, oops. Now this might be a silly question, but for... Nope, no silly question. Okay, so for a, a full size, a, a person mm -hmm. pattern, do you start making it this small or do, is the pattern like huge? No, I, instead of making it on the doll, I would do the same exact thing. Okay. Same exact thing on this. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Love it. Doll pattern making is easier. It is easier. Yes. And then, okay, so I've given myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'll give myself a quarter on the bottom, too. All right. Then I'll cut this out. Now it's on the double. I folded it in half, so I don't have to, you know, um, copy the. I don't have to try to copy the. Um, the cap of the sleeve, and I don't have to, uh, you know, add the seam allowance because it's already in this when I cut it out. And pin it. And voila, you have your sleeve pattern. Whoops. That is so cool. All right, so let's All right, now we're going to sew it. Now let's sew it. And see if it fits. It's, I think it's going to be a little tight in the cap, but you, you never know. And I'm sorry. The scissors yep, the scissors. Again. Careful that iron top. Whoops, that's all right. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> all right, so um, first thing you want to do is add yeah, a little less than a quarter. Let's see if we go in this way, if the light is... Is that okay? That's a little... We have a glare, but hang in, everybody. There we go. This... You good? We're good. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do it about an, a little bigger than an eighth of an inch. I've made the stitches bigger, and I'm going to do a, 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 a gathering line. Oops, better turn it on. Okay, and just follow this around. Okay, that's your gathering line. You don't go under the arm. You, you come, you get the cap, but you don't do the underarm pieces. Leave enough thread that you can pull so that you can get a, a, an ease in there. And then let's come in here and sew it. Uh, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Oops. A little smaller stitch there. Now I still have these. Now, where you have where you have a curve, you usually if there's a curve, you usually need to clip. There's very few exceptions, but that that helps your seam. So I'm clipping one, two, and three. Now let's press this little sucker and see what we got. I love it. Press the little sucker and see what we got. So true. And that one. And to do this without getting, you know, I do it on the edge so you can, you know, iron that, but not crease the other part of it. Oops. The yeah, iron went off. Did it? Yeah, it's, it's a self. It goes off. Yeah. It's been sitting there. Curve underneath the arm. Just open that seam. And there we go. The seam. And let's see if the. It's looking pretty fits. good. I think 
so. going to pull this thread. Now this is what this thread is for. It's to give, it's, it's to ease in the fullness in the cap. And this, this, this uh, thread also makes the uh, shirring thread if you're doing a puff sleeve. I love puff sleeves. It's one of my favorites. Easy to do from this. All right, so now you see we kind of have a sleeve. What a great looking sleeve. It's not gonna win any design prizes, but I think it's- I, I have never appreciated sleeves this much until now. Oh, I, I, and I love, so can you add a puff sleeve at this point, even though it wasn't really planned? Well, you can very easily add it with the pattern, okay. on the pattern. And I think that's pretty darn good. I think that that's pretty darn good. Now, depending on, the, if you want a tighter sleeve, which I probably would, yeah. you'd, you know, it depends on the fabric and, you also have to keep in mind with a doll. Now, our dolls usually have, if they have bendy wrists, you can usually take the hand off. So if you want to do a tight sleeve, you can do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have a doll that doesn't, you have to make sure that you can get it over fingers. Mm -hmm. Right. So you may have to open it and then put a closing there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that, there you go. That is awesome. And. Uh, I would show it in, but I'm not going to because <laughs> uh, what the way this should happen. This seam, by the way, hits the should hit the uh, shoulder seam. The center seam should hit the shoulder seam, so it's pretty good. Um, I would usually sew the shoulder shoulder in before I close the side seam, so I could close this all at once. I could sew up that seam all at once. This was so incredible to see. Robert, did you enjoy teaching us this? Yeah, it was fun. Actually, it was fun. <laughs> we love it. This is so neat. Because and so many of us are beginners. No, and we don't. <laughs> We're just so happy to learn and to be here. And um, what, a, what a great way. You're virtually teaching. So it's it's reaching so many people and we're just so appreciative thank you my pleasure my All pleasure right. this was fun thank you i want to see your dresses by the way yes make them. oh we can't wait <laughs> all right bye bye